So, so uh, I'm talking. I'm here talking with some friends in Texas, and and we're talking about. A, I I see myself as a capitalist, a more socially responsible capitalist, and part of the reason why I'm here in Texas is is to create some noise, but more to help people that I can't. I can't necessarily reach and I don't have necessarily time to reach and I've made like a lot more sacrifices and I've I've gone away from helping just like one person so I can put myself into a position to help many and we were kind of having a little conversation on that and I just wanted to kind of open it up to the 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 other guys um do either one of you want to talk about like your friends that that may have been um, experience any things and how it's uh, like motivated you to do more good yeah I mean well like I was saying just a little bit ago it I lived in upstate New York when oh, I don't know about seven years ago six years ago and I had a group of friends that were really close to me and that I'd go and do a bunch of stuff with skate you know, hang out outside of school and all that stuff. Well, when I moved, I moved in a three-day period. And I told them that I was leaving. And on that third day, my dad came from Virginia and picked me up and drove me to Virginia. A couple of years after that, I find out that my group of friends that I have are going down a pretty dark path that never ends well. And always, you know, just affects the person's life forever and I felt I the whole the whole point of it is that I felt that I could have helped change that if I was there but at the same time I was scared at the fact that I could have been in the same position and maybe even end up like one of them did did you ever think that 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 situation that happened is is pushing you to a, a higher calling Surviving, yeah, you know. I mean, I could have chose that. I could have been there. I could have done that. Shit. I had, I've had, I've had friends here in Texas that went down the same exact path, and I was right next to them. You know, never did it, but I saw them do it. I was the voice saying, "Don't do this, man. You probably shouldn't do it. I, I'm worried about you. I'm worried about you. All that stuff." And he cleaned up his act, and he's good now. That makes me happy. But yeah, I would say that. I mean, I wouldn't want to see this happen to anybody else close to me or not it's not a thing for anyone to experience and it's just it's addiction man i don't i don't know it's the thing it doesn't no one needs to experience it because it, it brings you down just such a dark a dark path like you lose your sense of self like you lose your personal hygiene you lose your your sense of awareness like you don't get into that that bubble that that you are supposed to be in you're you're locked in a shell you're you're closed up by this this hurt of ashamed disconcernment and just dysfunction like every time that i go back into my town where i'm originally from like i'm not the person who who i am i'm the person who i am today by my past my past made me to who i am and i'm i'm a recovered drug addict like i use i popped everything basically in the book besides heroin and peyote like i've i've hit a lot of things i've witnessed a lot of people go downhill but every time i go back into where i used to stay as the way that i look at things now i see them I see myself through them, like what I could have been like. And I don't ever wish upon that because that's a dark, that's a dark spiral. That's, that's darkness spinning in itself. And you see that light, but you just don't know how to grab that light. You don't even know how to accept to walk around and see your own shadow. And you just, you, you, you get hostile, you get agitated, you get frustrated. Like you don't. You kind of have have, have you ever have you ever stopped to like give it meaning to to call upon yourself that that I mean how has it how has it pushed you like in other ways to like do good in the world? Well, because I died, and when I died, 
I saw things in a different standpoint. Like, I, I didn't just see myself as this, this pity person who had so much guilt and sorrow, like, a person who bottled up, like, I'm a person who bottled things up since child. Like, when you let that go, it, it, it frees you into addiction in yourself and the people that you meet or in even in your own household. Like, if you let go of your resentments, you let go of your frustration of things that either you can change or can't change, we have to go with it. And... I mean, that's, that's... That's a good point. You were saying that you were stuck in a shell. Like, that's that's how it is. You know, you, you're walking through <laughs> life in this bubble of your own addiction and, you know, mourning that people are coming by and bouncing off of that bubble and trying to get inside, but you're not letting it happen. You know, it's just not working because you don't think they see the way that you do or feel the way that you do when in reality it, they can through empathy, you yeah. know, you sit there and express and they express and then you guys find an understanding and, you know, the emotions and you guys can, you can get to another standpoint in understanding each other. How, how does that correlate for with the shell that you were talking about last night that you have? I mean, it's the same thing, really. It's just like, no, nah, it, it's pretty much the same thing. It's just not addiction wise, you know, it's not like being induced by hardcore drugs and stuff like that it's mainly just like you said having something happen in my childhood to where i haven't been listened to or had felt that my voice had been heard and then just carried that and then used that as a I forgot how you said it, it uh, yeah no it's it's the same thing it's so so are, are you willing to challenge yourself to step out of your comfort zone and to to, to uh, embrace like the fact and forgive yourself and not have any guilt about having that shell, but just to be able to, to step out of that shell. Yeah. I would want to. I'd, I'm not sure how much you know energy it will take me to actually do that, but it's something that I would like to see myself out of, yeah. Well, well a shell is made of sand, and, and if you take away four or five grains, that could open up like a, a vortex of lots of possibilities. So a lot of people just try to release the whole shell and they probably have like moments when they just go crazy. Yeah. But sustainably, if you get through a few of a few grains of sand of the shell, it's going to open up a lot of opportunities and possibilities and relationships that will lead to a lot of good. Are you yeah. willing to do that? Yeah, I like that. It's a little bit more simplistic than the actual, you know, situation. Like, it always, that's how it feels. Like, you're dropping the whole, like, you have to just get rid of all of it. There's just this massive change that has to happen. Like, your whole life needs to be turned over or something, you know, but it's it doesn't have to be like that. And usually only that, that the type of transformation that we're talking <laughs> and the type of transformation that people ask for you to, for you to just to totally drop your, your whole shell that only happens when bad shit happens to us. And when bad shit happens to us, like a lot of people get sick because they need to rest. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they have to rest when they're sick. But if they would have rested before that, they wouldn't have got sick in the first place. So it's like, well, I don't have time to do this. And all of a sudden you have time when something bad happens to you. But that opportunity and that creativity, if you let, through, let go of a few grains of sand, can be here any time. Yeah. And it's easier to fit it in something that you can do manage manageable that works on an everyday basis. Right. I agree with that. So you're ready to go. Are you ready to go pro? I'm ready to go pro. Are you ready to dream again? Yeah. <laughs> Once more. Yes. Look at that. That's good. That's like, it was like not forced, just a few grains of sand dropped on the floor. I can see him right over there. <laughs> Charles is going to have to clean that up later <laughs> when he cleans in a couple months. Hey guys, I cleaned it. Yeah. You guys see that today. I am... Um...